funny. You were just chatting so relaxed and then like we hit record and all of a sudden we just sit up like this and like I feel like I'm at a new desk right now. So you can see that we're obviously sitting at the kitchen bench now. Yes. Normally I sit outside but it's a freezing day mm. and um, yeah and it's kind of, I, I like that lounge out there but it's just too damn cold so I'm looking yeah, forward to nice spring to get here. Yeah. yeah, hanging out for spring and summer. Yes. This winter's just gone forever, hey. Too long. I'm and you've got a cold, that's why you've got your yes, tea Yes, we've got there. our tea. We're not we're yeah. both, both not dealing too well. Looking after the vocal cords, although I probably shouldn't be having cold shit. But anyway, right. how have you been? Yeah, good, thanks. Really good? busy, but good. Yeah, you were just telling me a little bit how busy you are. But you're always busy. Yeah, it's kind of the norm now. Yeah. I've kind of just accepted that life is busy and I just have to keep going with it at the moment. Yeah, because I've... When, I, I know I did the footy show stuff for you as well, but we were kind of in contact. How long has that been now? Maybe six years, five, six years? Yeah, it's been about seven. Seven? I Damn. Think. Yeah. Yes. And. Because I've really seen your stock just go. Yeah. <laughs> we've grown a lot in the last three years. It's exploded. Yeah. And then. And when you say that, it's JLD Entertainment. That's why you're chatting about for the. Because there's a lot of people that actually don't know you, but they know. JLD Entertainment because yes. I was saying, oh yeah, you know, I've got the podcast player and I've got Jackie coming on. They're like, Jackie, Jackie. And I was like, JLD Entertainment. Oh, yeah, right. it's nice to put a face So it's me. cool that you've got this brand that, even though it's your initials, you can kind of go, you can just, you could, you could sell that one day if anything, yeah. you know, yes. like it's a product. Yes, totally. And it covers so many different things now. Like I, I started, um, I guess I started the agency because I had taken on, um, I was involved with sporting entertainment. Yeah. And then since we are still so heavily involved with sport, but we now, like we were just talking about before, is, you know, covering entertainment for the Cronulla Sharks, the yeah. Dragons, yeah. the NBL Hawks, yeah. um, the ATC, so like racing events. Mm. I feel like you're the only one that did the cheerleading stuff great, you know? Like you, you're good at it. Where you can see some people, like, I don't know, and I feel like people need to know that your cheerleading is different than other cheerleading. Because yeah. I know I've sent you girls in the past, and they're like, oh shit, Corey, do we really need to go down cheerleading? I was like, no, 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 but you need to see Jackie, like, you need to get it. Because you your stuff's different. It. Yes. Because it is cheerleading, but you've got a great kind of vibe on it. Because you look at your cheer, so you look after Cronulla Sharks and the Dragons, I'm just talking to NRL right now. And they're like, I'll go to another footy game or something like that. I look at their cheerleaders, I'm like, damn, like this shit is bad. <laughs> and they're like, we don't want to sit here and rag on other cheerleading no. choreographers and all that, but there is a big... If there's a difference. There's a big difference. Yes. And I think it is moving, it is, it's evolving. Yeah. And, um, and I always like to talk about how sport, the sport's constantly evolving. So yeah. it's entertainment and that's the industry that we're in. It's always yeah. evolving, you've got to move with it. Um, but yeah, I guess I've just taken on going down a different path and it's been successful and I... I think it's probably the best choice that, you know, you, you could probably make with your, you know, obviously you will get into your training of dance and all that. But if you think about the people who are like, no, 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 I've got to get the dance going, I've got to get like this. So then they cater for dancers, right? Mm. Where you're dancing caters, if again, if we look at the NRL, you're dancing for 10,000 people plus every single week. So there's probably more people in this country that are seeing your choreography than other choreographers. Yeah. If you think of it that way. Yes. Your audience is so much because you're hitting a sports audience. I know. It's massive. It's huge. And it's quite funny you put it like that because every week I'm constantly creating stuff for games that weekend and walking into rehearsal. This is the part I can't wrap my head around. Is that, so you do a new routine every week? Every week. Is that, do you, is that just you? Like you like, no, I need this every week or did I like, this? I like the challenge, Yeah. but at times when I'm burnt out and lose my voice, like that's when I'm like, I need to stop. But because when I got so busy and I'll get into the stuff that I do in the States too, because it caters to these needs, but I, I enjoy creating stuff constantly. However, I get very... Did they ask you to do a new routine every week though? Or is this just something... Oh, no, it's no? Something I just... You just I do just that yourself? Do because the fans, people notice, and if you've got dancers in the audience too, they notice if you're repeating stuff. I don't like to be known as someone that just keeps repeating things and yeah. just do that, that will do. It mm. won't do. Like, I'm a perfectionist as well. Yeah. And I like reinventing the wheel. So, however, 
it is very demanding the turnover. So the but do you? I, I couldn't do it. No. Oh, I mean, but if I, I wouldn't job, be able to do it with this lifestyle that I've got at the moment. I'd need it. Would need to be my everything. It is. Yeah. Which yeah, it and is. it is. Yeah, and yeah. You, I think your commitment is so good with this type of stuff. Yeah, but I can also yeah, every week. If I'm if I'm time poor and I'm and I've got access to the routines that um, my colleagues teach colleagues. Mm teach in the states i can tap into those routines and say we're going to do a choreography pros routine which right. is then the girls are like oh my gosh now i really need my brain yeah um but those routines are there for me if i need them yes quickly right and don't need to think too because what they say if, again i'm just talking footy but we, uh if we look at the football stuff how many rounds are there 20 26 26 26 so you do 26 routines 24 but you've got two do, teams. There's 12 home games. 12 home games. 12 home games. Right. So I've had 24 home games. In you've had 24 home games. So this year you've choreographed. And yeah. a few for Wigan. Yeah. At the start of the year. So yeah, a lot. Yeah. And then you've got your basketball stuff. So what I'm just trying to get out there is that I feel like there's a younger generation of dancers that I think really need to know you because you're choreographing more than any other choreographer at the moment. Mm. Like the, like we look at class stuff and yeah, that's it. But in terms of like an actual working gig, you've got the most ticked over dance gigs. So I just feel like if you're watching this, JLD Entertainment. Yes. It's good. You need, to, you need to get involved with it. Yeah. And, and it, okay, so we talk, and this is more, I want to be more of the viewer right now and hear you. But what is this, Amet, that you just mentioned it before? The, choreography pros? Yeah, choreography pros. Yeah. What is that? Choreography Pros is a convention in Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah. And this was my first third year teaching at it. It is a convention for pro teams, so NBA, NFL, college teams. Their directors and they two their directors attend as well as say four representatives from their team, from their squads, and they come and learn over two days, they learn thirty eight routines. Over two days? Two days. Thirty eight routines. Yep. Oh. So it's massive. And I think she had 29 choreographers, something like that. It was really big this year. But those routines, because they're... they're How long does that day go for? Are they like 10 second routines? Because that's just... One minute routines. One minute routines. One minute... Still One there. minute 20. And they're NBA. Day. Like they are intricate and patterns. They go hard. I was at a Brooks game, um, Brooklyn Nets. Um, when was it? Probably like three years ago. They were smashing it. Yeah. Killing it. They do not muck around. No. And you don't muck around in that convention either. Um, and I was, I had five of my dancers come over with me as well. And mm. that just changed them as dancers completely. They yeah. have gone to a whole other level. And one of my dancers actually went on after that convention this year to audition for the Denver Nuggets. And she made it. Oh, oh yeah. I did uh, see that. What, what, what's her name? The... Katie Manning. Yeah. Hey, Katie. Yeah, sick. No, I did see that. That's unreal. Yeah. Denver Nuggets. Yeah, so she is... They've, 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 they've got some good players too, without turning it into an NBA podcast. They've got some good players now, so she's going to be getting some great crowds. Yeah. She's, a tall, she's really tall. Hey, how tall is she? Oh, I don't know. Six? Six? Yeah. She's tall. Because I remember seeing her, I was just like, shit, you're tall. Yeah. She goes hard. She does. She, she And she does. lives it and breathes it. Because I know yeah. you, you, you get kind of like a blend. You get people who... Uh, you're like cheerleading, that's it, this is what I want to be, I want to go to the States. And then you kind of get people that are in between, they go, I'm going to cheer, I'm going to try push commercially and all that type of stuff. Yeah. Which, but you're getting commercial work, which is why I also think, again, get in contact with this lady. If you're an aspiring dancer or a young dancer and you want to get your foot in the door, you're just a really good gateway for people. And because you all continue to stop rise, you know. Mm. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah, it's really... Thank you, and I, I, mm. I really am appreciative mm. that you were highlighting this because not many people know that no, there is more out there than just. I was always pigeonholed as, oh, there's that cheerleader girl. No, actually, yeah. But it's very different now. Um, we've evolved and we're international now. So yeah. Yeah, it's it's really boomed. Yeah, no, I've been a fan of your stuff for a very long time, so no, it's it's great to see, and I just, oh, yeah, and this is the reason why I wanted to get you on, just so people just you know got to know you, and yeah. they go. Because there's so many dancers here where they're just tunnel visioned yes. and they're going, you know, I've got to get with that agent and I just got to book that gig. Yeah. So or I just want to be on the tour. 
or I just want to be musical. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you, there's so you, much you just, more out You're there. just going to be broke by 24. Broke Skinny and disappointed. And broke. Yeah, skinny, yeah. broke, disappointed. Yeah. You've, got to, you've got to tick all the boxes. I was saying this with Thanos the other day because he literally, people might see him as one thing, but he literally does everything. Like he does musical theatre, he does commercial stuff, he'll do like a random contemporary company or he'll yeah. do like a, he says yes to any, he's doing TVC castings. He, he says yes to everything. So, and I just yeah, feel like he was doing what, a lot more than, yeah. But yeah. dancers need to do that. They need to get connected with everyone. They do. And it was something that I was thinking about on the way here. Um, about taking classes. If you are a dancer who, I find a lot of dancers see that there's an open workshop on and they go, oh, that would be so good to go to, but I'm not good enough for that. Mm. Or should I post this, but what will pe people think? You know what mm. I mean? And I'm like, and I've, I've watched it for a while and some people don't go to class because they think, what will people think? You're there to, you're, you're there to do a workshop with the choreographer to learn yeah not to it's not the grammys like you're not going yeah to instagram's learn. really messed that up it really has and i feel like the line really, is very blurred yeah the open form of training because that's when i truly got better as a dancer was open class because i started late and you know really started doing open class when i was like 17 that's when i was like oh shit i've got to pick my socks up here mm. but i was doing it purely to get better instagram wasn't around mm. I feel like Facebook might have just started. I wasn't posting shit on MySpace. Oh, <laughs> you MySpace, know? <laughs> I had one. Funny. Yeah, so I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't doing it for that, and it was truly about to get better and all that. And it's just a lot of people, unfortunately, that you know they're doing it for their Instagrams. Yes, and it's all great to have you know your Instagram page, and I feel like it's a great um, portfolio for dancers to have. But you know, if you're in class and you've got this, you've just You've just taken a great class. For example, you've, t you've gone and taken Tannels' class. Yeah. And you loved every second and you learned so much from him, but you messed it up a little bit. Mm. Who cares? You're mm. in class. And if you think that if this was something that really vibed with you, post it. Like, yeah. it's, your, it's your gift. Like, people are getting very um, shy and mm. they kind of need acceptance from others to post things or... I yeah, don't well, I don't... Yeah, I, I don't post anything relating to my dance. Like, I don't think there's been me dancing no, at all. You should. Yeah, yeah I mean, I should, it. but I, I don't feel like it. Like, if people see it, like, I would care maybe if you saw it. Mm. So, say if I did, like, I was absolutely killing it in class and I saw that you had some work coming up, mm. I probably wouldn't post it on Instagram, but I'll send it to you. Be like, hey, Jackie, I'm still killing it. I just smashed this class out today. Run your eye over it. Let me know what you think. Yeah. And I feel like people could maybe direct message people. Yes. Just so the right people are seeing it, not the 12 year old that you took for a workshop. Yeah. Just go, oh my God, I love you. Like, she's not going to get you a job. So yeah. that, that's the only thing with me is that if I do go to a class, number one, I'm there to get better. I'm not really there to get judged. And yeah. if I am going to film it, it's only so I can send it to someone who matters. Yes. And we all matter. But for me, where, where I'm at, I'm constantly, like, if I'm doing something dancing so I can further my career, mm. you know, yes. and I go, I haven't ticked that box yet, I should probably yes. push myself. Yeah. Because, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this presenting stuff and format. And yes. the reason why the thing for this podcast as well is to get people like yourself in there that people, they might know, but they don't really know. Like, mm. they, no one's held a conversation with you. And there's probably a lot of people out there that... Mm you know, probably should be chatting to, but just so like people get to know choreographers and yeah. and the right people. Yeah, and you know? not out there in, it's the, still the industry, but it's just a different industry. Industry is big. It's yeah. sport and events and, hey, it's only getting bigger and better. Yeah. So, now, yeah. where did you start? How does this all start? Like, how do you wind up doing massively well in sports entertainment? What was life before JLD? started what were you doing were you an active dancer like yeah um, so yeah i was um so started dancing really young mm. um graduated from brent street um so i was a brent street kid when it was back in um the studios were in newtown yep yeah in waterloo and i graduated in the waterloo um school and then full-time um, yeah full-time yeah who was in your year there um we had I know, Brad. Brad Green, yeah, because, uh, okay, so we've got Brad, I'm going to record one with Brad after this, but yeah, yeah we've got Brad, I knew Brad was with you. Yeah. Was it, who, who else Renee was Baj, um, had, uh, Cookie. Oh, yeah. Dave Dennis. 
Yeah, right. Um, Dave Dennis do that year. Yeah. What was he like in full time? He was just a you know, character. Is he, is he still the same? Still the same. Still the same? Yeah. The showman. The showman. Yeah. Great for a solo. Yeah. You can't not love him. No. Yeah. No, 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 no. You no. and I have worked with him quite a bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. He's great. Yeah. David D, if you're watching, what's up, brother? We should hang out. We should get him on the podcast. That He'd would be, be a crack. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, shit, I don't even think. Oh, oh yeah. Even Nancy would be good. I'd get Hilton. her. Get her. Yeah, he'll when he's in town. Yeah, he's too busy tap dancing or sure. doing a handstand in the corner or something. <laughs> yeah, talented family that. Yes. So you, you you were in good company there, and there's probably names there. You know, I never saw Cookie dance. No, I only saw him as a Hit singer. Simmons? Oh yeah. Yeah. Shit, these are some names that I haven't. Who yeah. are killing it as well yeah. in the industry, and um, yeah, you should get some. How how many people did that course? We had a we had a really big course. Um, oh, I've done a big one. Look, what was the only full like time? Two thousand and four. Yeah. Okay. So my memory is not great as it is. <laughs> <laughs> Let alone two thousand and four. But there were three classes, so there was um, beginners, intermediate, and advanced for all classes. What did full time look like back then? Were you doing really contemporary cool. lyrical hip hop? Were you doing all that like Everything, it is today? Singing, acting, music, theatre. So were you getting much? Because I know audition prep is a big one. Were you doing audition prep? We did some, um, but nothing like what they have access to today. Yeah. Um, It'd be interesting what full time's like today to then. Yes. Yeah. Um, back then it was... Oh, look, we, we, we had a lot of great teachers and choreographers like Cameron Mitchell, Matt, yep. uh, Matt Lee, Darren Disney, Kelly Abbey. We had Shannon. Um, who is now killing it back over in LA. Oh, Hot Soffle? Yep. Right. And He would have been young. He was. He would have been like the little hot, fresh face dude. He was. He was like, yeah, he was in on the scene. Yeah. Yeah. He was Mr. It. Yep. I told you crazy, actually, on that point. So I actually did his class. He did an open class. And I was just like, hmm, should probably... And like, I'd worked for Shannon. He was one of my very first jobs. Him and Simon Lin when they were yeah. Project Motor. Yep. On So You Think, Dancing for Kelly Rowland. That was one of my first jobs. And I did it for nothing. So all these people that pay the dancers shit. Sometimes you just got to suck it up. Mm -hmm. Anyway. So I did that all for nothing. And he was one. Of, and I remember looking at Shannon going, he's that absolute man. Mm -hmm. And it was just before he booked MJ. Yeah. And I was like, he's the dude. And it, and, and it was great. Because um, now Simon, I've kind of, in maybe past year and a half, I've been working for him again, which has been good. Um, but yeah, no, it was good. So Shannon's the absolute man. But, oh, but the point though is I went to his class. That's what I want to say. I went to Shannon's class and I was gobsmacked that it wasn't packed. Really? Okay. It was packed. It probably had about 60 people there, okay. but I feel like... It could have been bigger. It should have been so much bigger. Yeah. Yeah. It should have been packed. Totally. Like, can't move suddenly. Yeah. Instead. I was like gobsmacked. And that's when it hit me. Why are we doing open class? Yes, and do you think people were scared to take that class? I was. Yeah. I was scared. So that's probably where everyone else was. They're probably at home watching their reality TV. I was nervous as hell because I was like, damn, I haven't done class for a little while. But Shannon's one of the boys, probably going to be a fun class. Chris Tatalius was the assistant on it. And, I was and like, did you oh. learn something? Come away with um, that, did you? Yeah, no, I, it, it gave me a little bit more confidence. So I was just like, oh, actually, no, I'm still... I just feel like I go to class now. I'm just going to be out danced by mm. some 16 year old. Oh, who's doing, machines. Yeah, because they're guns. But um, yeah, no, I, I I love that it wasn't as showy. Like it wasn't so much like who are we picking for this, yeah. which is just something that's always kind of, I, I, I just feel like I didn't pay 40 or 30 or 10 bucks to go watch some other person dance. In front of the camera. I'll watch other people dance, but I don't want to have a spotlight on that person, mm. you know. Been saying that, I couldn't really care anyway, but that's just me. But I know there are other people who are like that. They're like, ugh. Until they get picked in and they love it. <laughs> I know. And you know what? And yeah, I don't know. I, I, just, just, I just wish that wasn't a thing. Me too. But I also think that that ugh attitude as well shouldn't exist. If you're that ugh person that's like, I wasn't picked or, you know, I'm up the back. Don't have that attitude. Because that person that's... There could be someone in the room that books you for your next job. Yeah, Or definitely. that choreographer re might really like you, but your attitude really stinks. Yeah. Be that encouraging dancer that's kind of pushing the people that are in front of the camera. And yeah. 
you know, people vibe off people's energies. Yeah, big time. Well, that's something I kind of pride myself on, that mm. generally people like me first before yes. they see me dance. Yes. I think that's something a lot of dancers need to do. They need to learn people skills. I think it's a great thing. I say that a lot. I do a lot of speaking with full timers. Yep. Just speak correctly and deliver yeah. whatever you're going to say with a smile on your face and be genuine. Yeah. Don't talk shit. Like, oh, you know. And they're good words. It's yeah, good life lessons. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but, um, and why did you do full time? Because I know people do full time now because they need to get connected. Mm. Or I feel like people did full time, and correct me if I'm wrong, but to get better at dancing. Yeah. So, where, where was it both? Like, why Brent Street? Just run me through all that. Well, I was in a. I was in a place where I could have left in year 10 and gone into full time straight away. Mm. And, but my life would be completely different now. Yeah. I wanted to finish year 12 and then I just, just mature. yeah. And I just thought full time is next. That's the next thing for me. And I was kind of in a crossroad as well. I didn't like, I knew I wanted to dance, but I just, I needed guidance. So anyway, after full time, I, um, actually full time was a full on soul searching year too. Cause I went through an eating disorder. Right. So I went like complete, didn't eat, no really? eating. And then body was like, no, 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 I need to eat. Now you're not a big girl, all naturally. So mm. what, did you feel that eating disorder came because of how you felt you needed to look as a dancer? Yeah, and I think um, there was a lot of, there was a lot of, I think, misguidance and not from the school, but just in general, um, how dancers should look. look and eat and live off coffee and cigarettes and water. Yeah. And good luck. Yeah. And keep smashing it in class. And keep smashing and, it. That's, there's stuff that, you know, is mentioned to you in class and that, it stays with dancers. Mm. Like, they'll remember that for a long time and they think maybe that's the norm. Anyway, so I starved myself and then it turned into bulimia. So I had to battle with that for full time and it was just, it was a tough year. But anyway, graduated, mm. loved and hated it for different reasons. Um, it's a great school and I'd highly recommend it, but just... You just figure yourself out in full time. It's a real, do you really want this? So I kind of want to hit on that point because I'm quite torn between full time because I feel like what people get now out of their full time year, because the ability of dancers is phenomenal going into full time. Mm. And I feel like if you really want to be a better dancer, do full time because you're going to do shit every single day. Mm. You're going to get better. Um, so what, but I'm like, uh, if you're already amazing, a lot of the things that you're going to get out of full time, you can actually do yourself. You could probably go to the States and get the same training. Yeah. But even if you take the training out of it, mm. all the connections and all that you're going to build. Yes. You could definitely do that. So what did you, because I, I just love hearing people that are a little bit more honest with their full time yeah. experiences and their views on it. What was the part where you like, mm, loved it? Are, are you talking about the grad or are you talking loved, about the end of the um, year? I loved, I loved everything. I loved learning from each teacher, each choreographer. Mm. Um, I didn't love, I didn't, uh, the training was amazing. Yeah. Um, I just didn't, at, I didn't love the scramble on top of each other to get to the top type thing. I was right. very much like, you know what, I, I could leave it. Like I, did, I didn't want to climb on top of each other to get to the top. I, right. never, I never wanted to do that. Um, so if, did you find that in class where like there were just dancers who were super pushy like that was super just like pushy yeah and right so that, that's more of a personality thing rather than yeah. the product of full time no yeah the product of full time is great and right and it puts you in touch with um, the right tools gives you the right tools that you need for everything that you could do and Brent Street I f they like there are a few people that asked me, they're like, oh, what, what full-time should I go to? Mm. They're all so different and you really got to know what's right for you. I feel like Brain Street's got this thing and they, they've always had it where there will be a group of killers mm. that just want it more than anyone else. And I love that for the one who's a bit, I don't know, oh yeah, I want to be a dancer. I think Brain Street will be good. Because you'll work out quick smart whether you're going to be cut for it. Because yes. straight away you're going to see 10 chicks in the corner that would smack you across the back of the face and to get in front of that choreographer. Yep. So you go, whoa, yes. they've got that. Yes. 
Yeah, and I feel, and like, in like I don't really want to dive into my thoughts on every full time, but I know, even if I look at the Eddinghouse and stuff, and I work with them quite a fair bit, they're great on nurturing people mm. and really developing them, because yeah. it, it's, um, uh, it's more of like a boutique training. So for the ones who really need a really good direction, mm. they've got very good personal training like that. But Brent Street has always been one where you go, shit, because they've got, what, over 100 people now. Yeah. If you can't make it out of a full time, you're not going to make it in this industry. Well, you're not, because it is just bloody tough. It's cutthroat. Yeah, because as soon as you leave... But it'll give you good training for it. Yeah, but as soon as you leave full time, you're dealing with the full time that was before you and the full time that was before you. Yeah. So 100 people every year that just Brain Street pump out. And we've yes. got Village Nation probably do 50. Eddie yeah. Housen's between that 40 to 50. Yes. Evan Bowie's into yeah. the Then you've got so 85. Many, so many. Um, I do think that the whole nurturing aspect in full time is really important. Yes. I think, I think if, I, if we had that back in our day, um, things would have been totally different. Um, so they were pretty full on with you there. It's just yeah, it's just full on. And, and I that was Jackie. Jackie was running Brent Street yeah, at the time, yeah, and Wayne. Yep. Yeah. Um, we have Jane Beckett. Um, and but look, it was just that's just how it was. Yeah. Like you, that's just that was back in the day, and that's just how things were run, and um, how you learnt, and and whatever things have evolved, and yeah, um, new structures are in place for different times and it's great but I, I do think nurturing and I'm very big on nurturing as well I nurture all my squads and yeah dancers that I work with and you've got to mentor them and well you've got a great skills. thing because you see them so often because you're doing bloody 50 routines a week <laughs> so you do see your girls a lot you kind of got that bit of that big sister vibe I mm. think with a lot of the girls so yeah I think yeah and I've just seen the way you interact with dancers it is good where I know I can be teaching I'm either Trying to be Mr. Cool dude, happy dude, but then if shit starts going south, I turn into a bit of a psycho and I'm like, oh. all right, get, get your shit together. Like, yes. I'm a bit, I know I can be a bit heavy handed. These poor little ten and unders that I teach at the moment. The, They'd be like, oh my god, oh my god. I'm, I'm, and there's only ten of them or eleven of them. They're our small, so I teach at my parents' dance studio, GB Dance Co. 50 years this year. Wow. Yeah. Whoa. But I'm very heavy on these poor little girls. These there's like eleven of them, and yeah, absolutely smashing them with technique. And like, because they're not a big group, they all have to be amazing. Mm. And I bet uh, they are. Yeah, they are. They're great. Yeah. They haven't lost. Oh, I think they came second once. Mm. Oh no, no, they didn't place for the first of Stedford. I know you like, told me this. Like, did I? You walked out or something. You yeah. Oh no, no, no. That was different. no. That was something different. <laughs> that was something different. That was something funny. Different. So just a uh, quick. Uh, we took the my parents' dance studio, we went down to Canberra and there was a big open age jazz section. I think there was like 32, 33 in it. And they were the last ones. And they were halfway through it. I was just filthy at them. There were so many mistakes. Mm. Kids were walking it. So I got up and walked out. They wouldn't let me. I didn't say goodbye to any oh, filthy because I get so competitive. It's yeah. such a shit trait. Mm. Especially under Stepford. I yeah. sit back and look and I was like, I just got all hot under the collar over a bit of bloody plastic, that one person looking at my dance. <laughs> they won. They won that dance, but I hated it. It was crack up. The oh, funny. Lady of Stedfords. Do you, do you adjudicate much? No, and I would love to, actually. I feel like you'd be good for yeah. that, because obviously you're trained in like yeah. all the disciplines. I would actually, it's something I've thought about this year. I thought I'd love to adjudicate mm. um, because I'm constantly doing it with my dancers. Yeah. Like my dancers will finish a routine and they'll know from my expression. Yeah, you always know oh, what's up. We killed it or oh, she is not happy. Like, wow. But I'm usually happy, but. You should be really happy. I mean, they are pro dancers. Yeah. They're and getting they paid to dance. They turn up knowing This isn't up. a dance class. Yeah. But if someone's like, you know, flapping around at the back, <laughs> I, yeah. do, I let them know. You should. Yeah. Um, Have you ever kicked someone off? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I feel like at that level, if you're treating it like it's in a Stedford, yeah, get yeah, out. Yeah, you just want to come here and not put the work in. Would, you can go somewhere else. Well, think about the numbers that we were just railing off then, the amount of people coming out of full time. That's why it shits me when I see it. If I'm on a gig and there's someone walking it or they're just taking it for granted, yes. I'm just like, there are so many other bastards you out there. want your position. And no one is that unique. No. Like, you are so, like, replaceable. Yes. 
and yeah yes totally and work hard yeah work hard and when someone says market they don't mean it they mean like 80 percent yeah like you don't need to thrash yourself around but you no. need to make sure you're Muscle memory knows exactly what's going on. Yeah. Um, so Grammy, so so you've you've told some girls like is that through like how if you were to let a girl, have you ever let a a cheerleader go mid season? Um. Or have yes. you always done a... Um, there are many reasons why they get let released. Go. Yep. Um, or they just get relaxed. Hmm. Um. So I think you should take a couple of weeks off. Just go relax <laughs> for two years. <laughs> I um, like that term. Relax, relax them. Uh, you need. They yeah, need I to feel think like about. I need to relax. <laughs> I love that. I'm going to start using that. Hey, um, babe. Um, just, just go relax. <laughs> and when I say relax, it means go and work your ass off. Yeah, I know that means holy back. shit. Or come pull back. your head in and come back when you've got a better attitude. 100%. Wow. I don't like bad attitude and I don't like, I don't like bitching. Yeah. I don't like bad attitude and I don't like people who just kind of cruise. How's the bitching? Because, you know, that's a lot of girls it's, around each other a lot. There'd be cliques. There would be groups. There's cliques, but there's no bitching. No bitching. No. Right. If it, if it happens, I knock it on the head. Yeah. And the door's always there. Like... You yeah, just, that's good. You are a team. You need to work as a team. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's yeah. good. No one's better than anyone. No one's out on the field to shine more than the person next to them. Yeah. You're there to move as one and kill it as one. Are you pretty... Do you feel like you have to monitor you girls at the moment? Or are you pretty confident that when they go out there, they're going to deliver? Or is there still... Do you always... Are you watching? Because I know as a choreographer, you can watch stuff to see if the products right so what you've delivered is right mm. but is there a part like I, I think because I was at the game last week and I was watching a few of them like when they score a try and they have to start doing stuff are you watching do you watch that stuff as well always yeah because if I'm not watching someone else is watching um I watch and I get feedback what worked and what didn't work after the game like yeah or this person was a bit out she might need like you need to you know yeah attend to that or yeah um, but you know what? Everything works really well at the moment. The start of the season is when you monitor them the most. Yeah. And you you just need to iron out whatever. And that's why it's a good product because you just monitor and iron out anything that needs um, fixing. But I can confidently turn up to a game and know that they go home and practice. Yeah. Because if they don't, they don't do the next game. Yeah. Um, and yeah. And actually this year has been really... Um, rewarding. Every squad has turned up every game and has killed it. Yeah, great. And I'm like, wow. That's good. Like, yeah. It's really, good. yeah, it's really nice. And, and, and uh, so they audition for this? Is this JLD audition or is it team specific? It's team specific. Right, yeah. okay. Yeah, so for example, the Sharks will hold an audition, for, say, November 18th or December 18th or something stupid. Like, yeah close to Christmas, mm. but we get in there because you want the best dancers. Yeah. And then Dragons, I think we held the week after or okay. something. So dancers kind of pick the teams, I guess, that they want to dance for, or they just don't care. They just want to dance. Have you created a clone with the Sharks and the Dragons? Like you've got a good blueprint product that works mm. and or are you Dragons? Are you mixing it up a little bit? Have we got a different mob over there? Like other... Both teams have different squads. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, so are the squads different though? Squads like, do you look at those squads and do you go, oh, like, there's a big difference between these two no. bunch of girls? Or they're very similar? Very similar. Very similar, cool. Very similar Who's um, better? No, I'm ability. Just <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Do you know what? They are both equal. They both oh, you, 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 you can, you, you can tell me when I'm going to stop recording. <laughs> and they, but Sharks, that they've, they've got a really strong brand and great bl bl blueprint yeah. which has taken years to get to yeah but we know what works and the directions that we are going in and um because i feel like you'd have it you'd know what works now because yes. how many how many years have you done sharks because that was your first Seven, like six. that was the first one that you really took over and took pride and then from there it all kind of yeah yeah went went from there but yeah sharks and there's a style to it as well so yeah. That's their style, and that's what you do with them. And um, occasionally, you chuck in some like hip hop, um, mm. whatnot, and 
the fans love it and it's great and it's fresh for me too. And then Dragons is, I just went and rebranded everything this year um, with the club and they got new uniforms and they got a whole new, um, they got all new choreography. Yeah. And yeah. Big no. makeover. Was this your first year with them? Yes. Yeah. And okay. they are just like a badass squad now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, I see photos because, um, who do I know that? Is it Taylor? The she yeah, yes. Taylor and she's, I don't know. And Jess? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, she's great. Oh my gosh, she's a gun. She's good. How old is she? 21. Really? Yes. Okay. What's she gunning for? Do you know, is she like, I want to go to the States, I want to for that, or is she, is she representative of what's her story? She is, and she's with Focus. Is she with Focus? Or great agency. Don't quote me on that, but I think it I is. I hope she is. She'd be great on there. Shout out to Lucas and Natalie. They're great. Wait, I don't know if it's Focus. Who cares? I'm going to do a shout out for them anyway, because I love those two. They're great. Yeah. Um, and she is, so I took her to the States. Um, I think that she would be great on an NBA team and I think she would, she would get a team if she went there and auditioned yeah. next year. Right. Um, however, she does want to do ships and... Is that, is that good money the, in the States? Like, um, is it something where... Same as here. Same as here. Same as here. Yeah, okay. Um, which is a shame. Yeah. But you know what? They make a lot of money through their sponsorship and their yeah. extra promo stuff that they do. They yeah. They make some good money on there. Yeah. How does that go with... Um, like the fees and all that. Does the club just give you an amount and go, this is our budget for this, make it work? Is that mm -hmm. how it goes? Or is it a set free that like, if you're cheerleading, this is the price and that's it? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's per game. Right. Um, they look after all the budgeting and then if they need any extras like appearances and stuff, they just say, book that. Um, so and that's not something you determine though. That's something that the club just goes, yeah. this is how much we... Yeah, they budget it every year. Mm. Um. Yeah, okay. Because I feel, the, the I, I don't know what the fees, but I feel like that it should be, because you put in a lot of work, you know? Mm -hmm. I, well, I just have a gut feeling that it should be, I feel like it should be like a few better. Hundred, like a, yeah. a day's, proper day's work. Yeah. Like, like I know I did a job oh, back at um, Pasha, the nightclub, and I just said deja vu, really weird, but. Um, That's good. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it, it was like, yeah, it was decent. Like, I was just like, okay, this is good. And now, you know, we kind of had a rehearsal once a week in the big gig. So I just, you know, I just love to see cheerleading maybe get a fee that people, you know. Yes, because the girls, pardon me. <coughs> You're right. They train for three hours a night. And then they're there for three hours prior to the gate. So, no, they're there an hour before gates. <coughs> and then they don't dance until three hours later. Yeah, so it's a lot of hours. It's all right. <coughs> cough it out. Cough it out. It's all good. I've been trying to hold something up as well. <coughs> Bloody winter, we're over it. <laughs> Thank God. Who got you sick? I would just throw myself into the ground. Yeah? This is my week off. Yeah. And my body just went, this is it. Hey, this is it. You're getting sick. this week. Yeah. Because, yeah, you uh, yeah, you sent me a Snapchat yesterday with you speaking. And That's <laughs> funny. I was just yeah. like, holy shit. Yes. Yeah. Not good, but that's what happens when you... Yeah, when you just work. Business. Yeah, yeah. I, I opened up my iPad for a reason. I completely forget. Anyway, don't worry. I'm sure I'll think about it later. Put him away. Um, yeah. So anyway, yeah. I, I just like to see, you know, a really good fee and that type of stuff with it. And the other, there was actually another point that I actually realised. I just looked at. If I look um, at choreographers, because you're definitely a choreographer in Australia that people should be connected with. But if I look at choreographers at the moment. We've got, uh, obviously, Square Division do great stuff. Mm. Yes, Marco's, nice. Marco's creating really good stuff. Mitchell Woodcock is on the way up. Mm. We've got Stephen yeah. Tanos. And then we've kind of got your Blake Woods and stuff like that. They're all guys. Yeah. How does this happen? Because this is an industry that is saturated with women. Yeah. Why know. don't we have female choreographers? What is it? Is it... And, Honestly, you'd probably feel like that this is an industry where you'd probably think there would be more women. Yeah, it'd be very... It, now, Kat Santos is coming up the ranks. I know that's there. Kelly Abbey is still working, but she's been around for a million years. She's just been such a staple for the dance industry. Yeah. Then you've got Amy Dell. She's kind of like floating around, but there's just not a lot of women. No, Even Cameron... Not. Like, <laughs> Cameron Mitchell's not a woman, but Cameron Mitchell is another dude, Matt Lee. Like, they're just these guys that yeah. are just... 
Yes, and it's an industry full of, like, you've got your producers and directors, and that's all kind of male dominant as well. Mm. Um, I don't know. Is that weird? It is Have weird. you ever thought about that? No. You haven't? No. But I'd like to think that I'm a woman in this industry that's, you know, we're all creating these great things, but yeah, I haven't really thought that it's all really male dominant. Yeah, you know, God, because I'd like to say it's like a inequality and I hate this term because I just feel like it comes down to who works the hard, who works the hardest, sorry, not necessarily what gender are you. Mm. And I don't, and I know just there's just so many hard working women. Do you feel like women aren't backing themselves as choreographers? Cassie Bartho is one coming up as well, yes. actually, that just reminded me. Yeah. She's doing some great stuff. Sophie Holloway as Sophie well. Sophie Holloway. But they're not, I can't, like, they're good teachers. I can't see them pitching to book a gig. Yeah, true, true. Where I know, like, if I was in early 20s, I was, I was trying to pitch gigs as a choreographer and to put it all together. I definitely know Mitch was. He's had that. Masham as well. Yes. When he was young, he was always put himself as a choreographer. Yeah. I just don't see a lot of women going... I'm a choreographer, you should book me. Yeah. And not I, just do an open class. Yeah, and I think, um, I don't know, I was always a pusher as well. I was like, I, I just wanted to make something. I wanted to create, I've always wanted to create. And I've just, I've always been like, mm. I want this I want this gig, I want. So you don't feel like it's a, do you feel like men get favored more? Uh, I, no. Or do you feel like there just aren't enough women backing themselves? I think, yeah, that's probably, it's the women. Maybe they need to start backing themselves more because there's some great creative minds out there. Yeah. And, but you know what? It also comes with your credentials. Like, yeah. It's, you can't not, you can't go past a credential. So all those names that you just rattled off are huge um, movers and shakers in this industry. Yeah. Um, but you've just got to keep moving with them and... Put yourself it's, out there. It's also, it kind of, I feel like there's a, pres a presentation and a presence, sorry, that um, when a choreographer, you know when you're chatting to someone who works on that side of the camera as opposed to another pretty face who's a great dancer, mm -hmm. like there's, do you find that? Yes. Oh, you can, you can tell like, oh, hang on, you've got a little bit more to offer than just learning some choreo. Like, do you, yeah. do, you, do you get a vibe from people where you're like, oh, you could probably do a little bit more than what you're doing. Totally. Mm. Um, and I see that because we're in a, in a stage where we're expanding and we... Like I get it from this Jess girl. Yes. I, I'm, I'm around there. there, there. Jess Hewitt. Jess, Jess Hewitt. Hewitt. Yes. As a... I get a vibe when I'm... When I, and I've only met her a couple of times, but when I saw her, I was just like, oh, you're good. Like I yeah. could see you doing more than mm. just dancing. Yeah. Like great energy, great... Leader. Yeah. She's my dance captain. Yeah, um, DC. She's 21 and she's a dance captain. And there's like girls who are 26, 27 in, in groups. Mm. And I feel, and I was completely, my voice, I couldn't even turn up to training on Monday night. I left everything in her hands and she ran 25, yeah. 25 were in the group. She just ran the night for me. I stayed at home, had a rest. And I... You, you, you just relaxed yourself. I did. Girls, I'm, I'm just going to go and relax myself. I had no sound coming out. But um, I, yeah, there are people in, um, in my group who are going to take on different roles and you can kind of see if they're just a dancer or if they can also direct and, and you know, help you with producing different things. How did you, because there are a lot of people now that go, oh, I just want to choreograph. Mm. I'm going to be a choreographer. How do you become a choreographer? Is it an age? Do you have to earn your stripes? I think you've got to earn your stripes. And how do you and earn the stripes? You've got to just, is it just do you just wait till you're 24 and you go, okay, now I'm a big person and now I can do it? Or well, you know what? I feel like the term choreographer is thrown around a lot. so much, like a lot. You could be a director of anything, or you could be a choreographer or whatnot. But I guess you've got to earn your stripes, and you've got to put, you've got to have products that you can show for it. Um, so how did you how did you start? How well, did you start? I guess my first... What was the first thing you... Do you remember the first thing you choreographed? As a job and you got paid for it? Someone called you? It or you pitched at them? Yeah, what was it? It would have been... Oh, it was something for the V8s. Right. Yep. And how yes. does that come about? That was just a networking... Um, I don't even know how that started. Um, but anyway, we 
we performed, I choreographed and we performed like in Sydney, in Queensland, in Canberra. Yeah. And the VX is massive. So it's yeah, pretty, yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to love the VX. Yeah. When was, was this? Like six years ago. Six years ago. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And not like we were just young and excited to be performing and whatnot. And I'm cringing at like just some of the stuff we wore or danced to or whatnot, but yeah. it was my first gig. And then from there, I went on to choreograph Sharks and then it's kind of just snowboard since then. Right. And the part I kind of wanted to get out of that is that because there'll probably be someone watching this who says, oh yeah, I'm a choreographer. And then they get, oh yeah, I, I got this gig for the V8. How did, like, did someone call you? I know, I know we're going back in the memory bank and yeah. apologies, but I just loved because I feel like the reason I wanted to get you on because you are a legit choreographer who's working and booking jobs and actually creating money for other dancers. Yes, creating other work. Well, I think that's a you can choreograph stuff, but when you're a working choreographer, so how does how so do I got it was in touch in, I was in touch with an, a lady who was um, she was running events. She was running events yeah. at the V8s and she wanted to have a dance group, a female mm. dance group. And at the time, I think the Pussycat Dolls were massive as well. So she kind of wanted a Pussycat Dolls vibe. Man, they were hot. I know. They're still kind of hot. Still... Remember that TV show? The one where it was like, who's going to be the next Pussycat Doll? I loved that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know why I watched that. I was Robin before. Anton, like she's just, yeah, she can, she created something cool. Anyway. But. So they wanted the VA women, Pussycat Dolls. Yeah. And then that's how that started. And then obviously. And were you personal, like you were friends with this girl and then yeah. she just had a chat going, Jack, what one of my options? And you said. Yeah. And then I, I just kind of pulled um, all the girls who I thought were appropriate for it and who were capable and great dancers. Um, and we all kind of just got together and traveled and went to Sydney and Canberra and Queensland. Sick. And that was the first one. Yeah. And Unreal. Then, yeah. And I guess that was the first, first gig and then it went so on. So it came from that connection. Yes. So for the guys who, so probably out of that for people that are listening, cause they're like, okay, that's cool. Yeah. But so for the guys that are really pushing out their content and they're really getting, um, like their open classes and they're filming themselves dancing in the mm. street or mm. in the garage or something like that. Eventually, they need to connect with someone because at the moment they're circling in the same pool yeah. of people, aren't they? Yes, and it's all good and well having an agent is great, yeah. but get in touch if you can get in touch with the people who are producing things and you know choreographing events and um, because it's all good and well that we as producers and choreographers can go to the agencies and say I need ten males for this job. I'm mean, gonna have an audition, send me who you've got, or send me photos. I like to have an audition because I like to see people, oh, if they look different to their headshots or you know, what their capabilities yeah, are. Yeah, that airbrushing is a son of a bitch sometimes, yes, isn't it? You yes. rock up and you're just like, who is that person? Yes, and the skin color's different and you're shorter <laughs> than what you say you are or, or whatever. You know what I mean? It's different. You got a black guy on a comm card, you got a white guy looking at you, just like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> Some bloody MJ cat in front of you. <laughs> right. But okay. it's it's nice, you know, if you can connect with other dancers um, separately through the agencies as well. Like, just, yeah, make yourself known. Yeah. Like, introduce yourself. Say, hey, I'm so-and-so. Yeah. Um, this is my agent. I'd really like and to work with you. Reputation helps as well because I feel like you could have booked me for a job and I don't think you met me. I think someone said, oh, yeah, you should look at Corey or something or did it come... Yeah, I can't remember, we're going way back now. But I just know I've been booked for stuff where I haven't known the person, yeah. but I've come from a recommendation yes. from someone who I've really hit it off with, yep. and it does some great work, whether you know, if I'm just friends with them and they just know I can you know, get down and that type yep. of stuff. So I think they have to be, you have to be socially active. You really do, and it comes down to, again, being good, you know, having a good personality and being a good worker. You and I have sat down together and brainstormed on events, mm. and you have suggested dances to me. Oh, You're like 100%. Benny Turland, who yeah. I then again used for yeah. the races. He's great, I love him, and I can't mm. wait to book him again. Um, yeah. But you were in touch with other dancers who I hadn't seen. Now, but, and Ben doesn't have an agent. Like, he doesn't have a dance agent. And he's killing And he was just someone, and like, he's, he's a very good dancer. But again, I, I just know he's a nice guy. Yep. Hang out with him, I go to the gym, yep. go for a surf and shit. I just hang out with him. He's nice to be around. Works hard. So, um, but piss off, man. I don't like it, but yeah. <laughs> but no, he's a great dude. And that, that's why I reckon, and it, it more came from, I know he's going to be great when yeah. he's not dancing. Yeah. 
and yeah. that that's when it comes down to it. I feel like a lot of people choreo choreographing, choreographing. It's a hard word. <laughs> tough word. You think I'd have that down pat by now? But I feel like they just need to start networking a little bit more. Yeah, and trust and backing themselves, being confident and. Yeah, put yourself out there. Mm. Um, like, I want to meet other dancers. I want people to connect with me and send me videos. And, you know, because there might be something that comes in next week that I need a whole different group of dancers for. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and it is why I, I sometimes sit back and I really scratch my head on why people aren't knocking on your door. Because if you get in your... So you've got 12 home games a year. Right. Yeah. So we have twenty four this year. No, but just so say if they get yeah. assigned to one team, not yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. If someone they've got twelve home games a year, and then that's say add on another four on the end, mm. hoping that they get to the finals and appearances and any media stuff that you can do. Yeah. So there's sixteen gigs already in one year. Yep. However, then you put on stuff for the races. Yeah, and, like, and you're in that circle. You're, like you're under your little JLD umbrella now. Yeah. You're in the system. Yep, you're in the system and you are a regular face that I see yeah. every week. And, and even, but the first year you might not book all that. No. You might not get it. But if you do it two years, you'll probably get the other stuff after that because you're sticking around. Yep. You're being, you know, Invest. punctual, you're rocking up. So I just don't get it. Like you, you could guarantee someone 12 to 16 gigs a year yep. I don't get why you don't have 300 people on your doorstep but I feel like you will very soon as soon as yeah. people start realizing what you're doing yeah. the next generation anyway yeah it's getting out there more now um, but I've been fighting hard like I've been building this business for seven years and it's it's taken off and yeah it, it will hopefully will only get better and bigger but yeah, I want to see more people at my auditions. Like I've got them, I've got auditions coming up maybe November, December. And do you really just reach out, you just put it on your Instagram or your Instagram and your Facebook or your social media, you just put it on that? Social media. Um, are you emailing website. agents? Do you email the agents and be like, I've got, or are you just purely relying on your own marketing? I email the, the agents right. sometimes. Um, but I always flag it. I, I usually try and flag it with agents and some dismiss it and some take it on board because it's good if they've got young kids that they've just signed it's good experience you're yeah. dancing in front of 20,000 people like yeah why wouldn't you do it why wouldn't you do it for that experience yeah I don't, I don't get it I think yeah. it's such, such a good thing but also because I don't want people also to think that you're someone that you only when you're 18 you go down to JLD and then you try to piss off and go mm -hmm. somewhere else mm -hmm. I feel like you're someone that people actually should stick around yeah because you go you grow with the person. Yes, yes. Like invest time with someone like, yeah. I know people like, I, Jeep, like I started, like mm, as started. soon as Jeep started, I was there and I didn't even know what they were. Yeah. That's why I'm so goddamn loyal to that place because, you know, we're kind of like, oh, Jeep, do we say Jeep? Like, oh, what's Jeep management? They say Jeep management, like, mm -hmm. you know, bloody hell, you just won the lotto or something. Yeah, and you've so, invested, you've, yeah, invest in people, in people and I feel like you're a personality or uh, basically, you know, someone that people should, but yeah. I feel like it's going to, that, that's a step up. But you, the thing is, I'm, I'm acting like no one's in your circle right now. You've got a shit ton of girls who love you and you do some great work. Yeah. Look, there are so many people on board now. Yeah. Um, you know, there was a time where I was like, I need to audition dancers because I don't have enough people, but I've got a huge um, group of dancers on on our books that we use regularly. However, I want more. Like we need more. We need new faces. Because you're going to get more work. There's so much work coming through. Yeah. Like I'm going after this to go and buy another big. I've got a big calendar on my wall. Yeah. And I need a bigger one. You need a bigger calendar. You just, need more days in the year. <laughs> you need more hours in the day. You need more hours in the yeah. day. But um, yeah, it's getting it's busier, it, which is great. Um, but yeah, like just. Yeah, more dancers need to get Hectic. in touch. Yeah, big time, big time. It de definitely will. But you know what? If they don't, they're lost in my books. Because yeah. yeah, you've got yeah. you've got the. Per are you are you going to start reaching out to other teams now as well? Like you've got. Do you have? So if eels hit you up. Yeah, we could do it. If doggies it's, hit you up. Yeah, it's doable. I feel like oh, look, I would love to. I would love to have like. A, I would love to oversee the NRL and make all the squads so incredibly um, elite and mm. 
um, just like they do in the States. Yeah. Um, but I'm just doing one at a time. At one moment. at a time. But yeah, there's, there could be structures in place so that we could make that happen. Um, but yeah, and it's also, but that's also a different industry in itself. Um, completely different. Completely different. And you're the only person, again, comment below if you're like, no, Jackie's not the only person, but I feel like you're the only person that really transitioned from a great dance background and really knew what they were doing in the cheerleading scene, so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just kind of, I always wanted to create um, stuff on, on the field and, and great stuff, but I also wanted to go to the States, but then that was just kind of, do I go to the States and be a dancer on a team or do I stay a choreographer? Do I push the choreography more, which right. I wanted more. Yeah, so, a bit more longevity in it, yeah. play your cards right. Totally. Yeah. yeah so. Are you dancing still or not? Have you hung up your dancing shoes? I don't have shoes? time. You don't have time? But you know what? I dance in the house a lot. <laughs> um, but no, but you know what? I, I am thinking of having a couple of open classes in the next holidays. Yeah. So I will be posting that. So I would love to see more dancers. Post that? Yeah. yeah. Yes. 100%. Um, because I, I want to dance. I want to get out there and run a class. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and I want to meet some new faces. Yeah, bloody yeah. hell. Yeah, you should. You yeah. should. Well, that's good. So, and what, well, what have you got coming up? So, you know, uh, the next back end of the year, mm -hmm. we said we've got this races gig. Yep. You've got coming up, you're doing activations and stuff like so that. So we've got, for now, so yep. going into September, we've got NRL finals. So we yep. look after the teams and interstate teams, as well as Everest Carnival, which mm -hmm. you are the face of. <laughs> oh, great. Um, no, no, I'll go that. <laughs> so we'll have activations all across Sydney and then as well as Royal Randwick. Um, Get, um, race days, and then we have oh man, and then we go straight into the NBL. I'm about to say, you've got basketball as well, yeah. So, you've got it's great big contract with the races, finals with the footy, and then going in. And you are looking after the Wollongong Hawks, Hawks. Illawarra Hawks, yeah. So, cool. we do production and choreography for them, yeah. Okay, cool, yeah. And then that takes us into Take us across Christmas, New Year's. Straight back into the NRL season. Straight back into it. Straight back into it's it. A big circle. Yeah. yeah. No, no rest needed. No. Um, yeah, so yeah, we're busy, but we get through it. So good. Yeah. So good to hear. Well, thank you for stopping by. I'm going to wrap this me. guy up. But yeah, that was unreal. So yeah. thanks, Eve. Yeah. Guys, check her out. JLD Entertainment. Need to get around it. Oh, peace out, guys.